clearly or am I choppy? Audible, okay. I... Thank you. I will now start now. By the way, whomever's mic is open, can you please mute them? Thank you. Pwede nang mo start. Good morning, Doc, and good morning to all the future RNs and future physicians who are listening at this very moment. But to take another step closer to our dream, let us first know and understand the drugs acting on the cardiovascular system. We are now on the Unit 8. Okay, by the way, this is Ivy Marie Sigrefon, and I'm going to be your first lecturer, which I will be tackling the introduction to the cardiovascular system. Okay, uh, by the way, please cut me off if ever I am choppy. When we talk about cardiovascular system, what comes into our mind? Obviously, the heart, blood, and blood vessels, right? The cardiovascular system is the railway system of the body. In what way? It actually transports nutrients and delivers oxygen to all the organs, tissues, and cells to keep them or simply to keep our body supplied with energy in much the same way how trains transport supplies across the country. Just, that's just an analogy from the earlier time. Okay, when this sh system shuts down, the cardiovascular system shuts down. The organs and tissues of our body begin to starve, ligotom or gutmun. This can occur when the vessels that transport the nutrients get clogged and the blood and the blood of course cannot get through. Or when the heart stops pumping properly and is no longer able to provide enough force to push the blood through the vessels or let's say the very intricate network of vessels now if that happens no more oxygen and nutrients will be supplied also part of its function is to remove waste products like carbon dioxide for excretion and we are going to tackle more about that later okay there are actually many things we can do as individuals to keep this railway system or the cardiovascular system working at its best. Let's say we should eat properly, avoid smoking or exercising regularly, but sometimes among good, that is just not enough, right? Especially if the case is getting worse. For many people, medications medications are necessary to prevent the cardiovascular system from bucking up or shutting down altogether so there goes the continuous creation of drug concerning the system but before jumping to all the group of drugs let us have first the basic or the foundation in order to understand the proceeding reports so please do keep track of all the important information that I'm going to be discussing. Okay, let's have a very short uh, overview, significant overview on the structure and function of the heart. Okay, please look over our illustration. Okay, please take note that the blue arrow here, the blue arrow signifi signifies um, the flow of the blood, specifically deoxygenated blood. Meaning, um, it is carrying with it carbon dioxide or mga waste product. It is not carrying with it oxygen. gigutum siya oxygen. Okay, let's discuss the flow of the deoxygenated blood. Okay, please um, take a look sa uh, blue na arrow. Okay, it is actually on the right side of the heart. Right side. Okay, it starts from the superior vena cava here sa upper and then sa lower inferior vena cava then of course after that it will now go to the right atrium which is the upper chamber of the heart then after that it will now go to at uh, before going to the right ventricle it will need to pass one of the atrioventricular valve no question what valve is that that is the tricuspid valve Okay, so going to the tricuspid valve, it will open, okay, and then after that, 
will go to the right ventricle where contraction happens. And then, of course, going to the pulmonary arteries. But before going to the pulmonary arteries, it need to pass through what valve? Here, this is the pulmonic valve. Then going to the pulmon pulmonary arteries, then of course, it will eventually go to the lungs. It is in the lungs where ang deoxygenated blood ma shift or mo, let's say, punta siya into oxygenated blood because uh, the carbon dioxide or the waste products will be excreted. Okay, and then I will discuss more about that later. Okay, so that's basically the flow of deoxygenated blood. Now, how about the oxygenated blood? Okay, so let's focus on the left side of the heart. Please take note, the left side of the heart. Please focus on the red arrow. So eventually, from the lungs, from the lungs, then it will now enter the pulmonary veins here. Okay, then of course, going to the left atrium. But before going to the left ventricle, it will need to pass what valve? Here, the mitral valve. Then going to the left ventricle, then before going to the aorta, it need to pass the, this valve here. And this is what we call the aortic valve. Then eventually going to the aorta and what comes after? Into the rest of the body or we call it the systemic circulation. I will discuss more about that later. Okay. Now... Um, please take note that the right side of the heart receives deoxygenated blood. The left side of the heart receives oxygenated blood. Okay, let's focus on the cardiac cycle. Please take a look at the illustration. Okay, what is cardiac cycle, man? This is the series of events that occurs uh, during complete heartbeat. So each period... Of systole, what is systole, Gale? This is contraction or relaxation? Contraction. Then it will be followed by the period of diastole, which is relaxation. Okay, please take a look at the illustration again, focusing on the first heart. Okay, dire. This one here. The blood flows in the heart starting from the atria. Okay, here. Atria, the upper chamber. This is actually the diastole period or the... Uh, but this uh, relaxation period rather also, wherein ang atria o ang ventricle ni relax and ang AV valve, which is the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, ni open. Okay. Para ang blood makaget through sa taingon sa ventricle. Now, there will be contraction. How? Okay. Here comes the sinoatrial node. Please focus on the second illustration of the heart. Um, kabantay mo aning mga yellow dire dapita. I hope makita ninyo. Okay. This is, that is sinoatrial node. Unsa man ni sinoatrial node? Sinoatrial node is the pacemaker of the heart. It coordinates contraction. Going back. Okay. Now. Uh, the sinoatrial node, the SA node, sends wave, the sensia of wave to trigger both the atria and the ventricle to contract. This is the start of the systole period wherein contraction happens. Now, the fiber branches, please take a look at uh, broken lines. Gale, I hope makita ninyo these broken lines here. Okay, that is or that are the fiber branches that send impulses to the ventricles causing them to contract this causes the av valve the atrioventricular valve to close tightly so after na siya ni at to sa ventricle mo close ang mga av valve okay why to prevent the blood from flowing back from from flowing back to the atrium Okay, so now the blood resides in the ventricle. Okay, if it will um, continuously flow out sa pulmonary artery, let's say um, to the lungs. Let's focus kind of blue part, which is carrying with it deoxygenated blood. I've mentioned earlier about this pulmonary arteries and then going to the lungs. Okay, and on the other side, there's a red na portion 
okay, um, it will go to the aorta and of course, systemic circulation all throughout the body. Okay, para maka-flow sila, okay, naadalis ato ang third nga uh, illustration sa heart, okay, paingo na sila sa um, respective nga circulation nila, okay, para maka-flow sila, the pulmonic valve, of course, and the aortic valve here, kanina naadiri, um, will open para maka maka get through sila and the contraction of the ventricles please remember the contraction of the ventricles not the atria the contraction of the ventricles allows the blood to be pumped out after that pulmonic valve and aortic valve closes to prevent from flowing back the ventricle okay I'm sorry. Okay, please take note that um, these valves operate much like a one-way automatic door. What do you mean? For example, let's say you are the blood. Okay, if you are the blood, you can go through in the intended direction. But remember, if you try to go the wrong way, the doors closes and stop your movement. So the proper functioning, basically that pinpoints the proper functioning of the cardiac valve is very important in maintaining the functioning of the cardiovascular system. Okay? Another, the heart muscle relaxes long enough to ins ensure adequate feeling. So meaning, the more completely it feels, the stronger the subsequent contraction. If kulang, remember, if kulang rapod sa volume, ang volume sa blood nga mo enter sa respective chamber of the heart, dili that stronger ang contraction. Kay why? Kay kulang man ang volume sa blood. This occurs because the muscle fibers of the heart stretch by the increased volume of blood that has returned spring back to normal size. So meaning, the further it is stretched, the stronger the spring back to normal. And this is the property, what we call the Starling's Law of the Heart. Okay? By the way, each um, one cardiac cycle is completed when the heart fills with blood, blood rather, and is pumped out. Okay, please take a look at the illustration here. We can clearly um, see the flow of blood, the, uh, the deoxygenated blood, and here the oxygenated blood. Okay, now let's move on to cardiac conduction. Okay, please listen. Okay, very important, Nisia. In cardiac conduction, each cycle of cardiac contraction and relaxation is controlled by the impulses. Please remember, it is controlled by the impulses that arise spontaneously sa SA node. Remember, I mentioned earlier, unsagal itong SA node, that is the pacemaker of the heart, ang SA node. Okay? Remember, these impulses are very important for the heart to effectively contract and send oxygenated blood to the different parts of the body okay the continuous rhythmic contractions are controlled by the heart itself please take note of that rhythmic the continuous rhythmic contractions are controlled by the heart itself meaning the brain does not stimulate the heart to beat okay it does not stimulate the heart to beat. The heart will beat as long as it has enough nutrients and oxygen to survive, regardless on the status sa the rest of the body. Okay, in such case, nga ang patient was pronounced brain dead. What is the reason, man, nga nung ang heart, it still continually, uh, continues functioning, but the brain is not? Why? Simply because ang contraction sa heart are controlled by the heart itself. Of course, naaja po ni um, the parasympathetic o sympathetic, which was discussed um, sa previous nga reporters, but we will know about that later. Okay, the conduction system of the heart 
consist of different patterns or pathway. This is very important. Ang pasunod sa pathway. Wherein, asag originate ang impulse and so on and so forth. Okay, please take note sa atuang illustration here. Okay, on the right side. Okay, um, we have the, the pathways, the SA node, the atrial bundles, kanisha here, and then after that, the AV node, and then of course, the bundle of his, and then the bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. Okay, let's start sa SA node here, kanisha. Please remember that this is the natural pacemaker of the heart where the impulse originate. It is where the impulse originate. After that, the impulse will then be transmitted to where? Atrial bundles. Here, Kanisha, the atrial bundles. Okay? The atrial bundles uh, conduct the impulse through the atrial muscle. Of course. And then the impulse will then be transmitted to where? Next is the AV node. Here. Now, what's the function of an AV node? It slows the impulse and allow the delay needed for atrial contraction and ventricular filling. Please remember, it slows the impulse and allows delay. Ang AV node. Then after, after sa AV node asa padulong, of course sa bundle of his. Kabantay mo aning light blue na color which is located sa center of the heart sa sap sa heart, okay? That is the bundle of his, okay? From AV node, it sends impulses from the atria into the ventricle by way of the bundle of his, okay? And then after that, it will then be transmitted sa bundle branches. We have here the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch, kanin dark blue, okay? Kanin kuan lang, uh, the foundation sa line, dili kanin mga um, projections na kawit kawit kay Perkin G fibers na siya. Okay, focusing sa bundle branches, um, it conduct the impulse through the ventricle and then it will then break into a fine network of conducting fiber which we call the Perkin G fibers. Here, kanin mga nag-branch of na sa ato ang bundle branches. Okay, Perkin G fibers deliver the impulse of the ventricular cell and that is when it stimulates the contraction of the ventricle. Ang sagali ng contraction of the ventricle, it allows the blood to be pumped out. Okay, so basically, that's the conducting system of the heart. Impulses are delivered as sagali to originate sa SA node. Then going to the atrial bundles, then the AV node, and then the bundle of his, the bundle branches, then lastly, the Perkin G fibers. Please take note sa pasunod. Okay? So, yeah, it will create, after that, sa Perkin G fibers, di ba naan ay contraction? It will create a strong and effective contraction from the ventricle para ang oxygenated blood ma-pump out throughout the body. Okay, so that's the cardiac conduction. Next, automaticity. What is automaticity? Okay, please remember this one. The heart generates its own electrical stimulation. Again, the heart generates its own electrical stimulation. That is the reason why the continuous rhythmic contractions are controlled by the heart itself. Dili siya pareha sa skeletal muscle which will have to be stimulated by nervous system, right? Okay? Ato na nang discuss earlier sa ato ang um, reports. Dili siya pareha sa skeletal muscle. It um, actually generates its own electrical stimulation. It keeps beating ang heart, ato ang art, heart, it keeps beating even taken out of the body. Take note. Ang nervous system it can make the heartbeats go faster and lower, but remember, it cannot generate them. Please take that note. The contraction of the cells of the heart is initiated by electrical impulses or the so what we call the action potential. It has been discussed kadaghana sa mga previous discussions, okay? Recalling sa ato ang discussions um, earlier, I'm sorry, sa previous discussions na to, di ba, ang action potential, 
this is the change of the membrane charge from negative to positive. So, ang mga sodium channels ng open. Okay? Okay. Next, um, next point is that cells are polarized. What do you mean? Meaning, there is an electrical voltage across the cell membrane. Okay? In resting state, please take note, in resting state or what we call diastole, the voltage is usually negative. If the rest ang cell, negative ang voltage. Meaning, the cell is more negative on the inside than on the outside. Okay? There is meaning if, uh, what they call this, if um, negative ang cell, meaning more sodium ang, and calcium outside and more potassium inside. Please take that note. Okay? Um, here comes the action potential. Okay, mahita na diha ang action potential um, na ay brief reversal sa electrical polarity. Electric polarity. Iyahang gibali ang charge from negative to positive. Diba in resting state, unsa gali charge sa cell? Negative. pag sa action potential, unsa charge or electric polarity sa cell? Positive. Okay? Um, next. The action potential of the cardiac muscle cell consists of five phases. Five phases. We have the phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. Okay, let's discuss each of the phases. Phase zero. It is when the cell reaches a point of stimulation. Okay? Stimulation. So meaning the sodium gates open. And of course, the sodium ni rush padulong sa cell. So meaning, there's a positive flow of electron. Kaya nulud naman ang mga sodium. Sige na, like, na lang discuss ng phases. You continue okay. with the rest. Okay, let's skip that one. But very importantly, ako lang i-emphasize, it is in the phase, in the phase, uh, how to share, two? Yeah, two. It is where the calcium slowly enters the cell. And we'll discuss what is the importance of calcium. Okay? Now, next step, um, let's have the rate of automaticity. Okay, please um, take this note. Please take note. Okay, very important. Kainisha na each area of the heart has differences in the action potential. Differences meaning dili uniform. Meaning each area of the heart has a slightly different rate of automaticity. Okay, in what way they are different? The SA node it generates an impulse 90 to 100 times a minute. So, pas pas ka ayo ang generation sa as ano sa yung depolarization. How about the AV node? AV node forty to fifty times a minute. And the pen, pinaka rather pinaka gamay is that the complex ventricular muscle cell, which is ten to twenty times a minute. Okay, please um take a look sa tong SA node. Okay. This is the reason nga nung ang SA node siya siya mo'y natural pacemaker of the heart because it depolarizes faster than any cell in the heart. Please take that note. Okay, let's move on sa conductivity. Again, SA node, sige tagbalik-balik, set pace. If si SA node ang gaset o pace sa heart rate, meaning ang patient or ang ya yeah, ang tao in sinus rhythm siya sinus rhythm meaning normal rhythm siya as a node man yang gamit okay um here's the thing if anything happens sa ato ang sa node the other cells in the heart heart rather are still capable of generating an impulse so dili kay si sa node di ay ang generate ga generate og impulse na ay back up Okay, na ay another protective feature at to ang heart. If there is, pero if there is no problems at to ang SA node, it can set the pace for the heart rate, and then the person is said to be in sinus rhythm. So that muna kong ingon nga normal rhythm siya. Now let's move on sa conduct um sa ning conductivity. Uh, ang ang mga cells sa heart it conducts an impulse rapidly through the system. Para ang mga muscle cells sa heart are stimulated at approximately the same 
the same time. Kaya ni Sudput, if ang right side sa imong heart gaon na ang contract, tapos na ulahi ang left side, di ba? So, dapat the same time, Jude, nga mas stimulate sila. They should be stimulated approximately the same time. Okay. Conduction velocity. Ang saman yung conduction velocity? This is actually the speed at which the cell pass on the impulse. Please take note, unsa sa galitong pasunod sa ito ang pathway, I've, ako na siyang gibalik-balik ganina, okay? I know, uh, makabalo na po mo, Anna. The AV node actually is the slowest. Pinaka-slowest siya mo pasa og impulse. Kaya unsa gato purpose sa AV node, igihang gi-slows down, o igihang gi-delay ang impulse para makaalaw o kanang contraction o enough ventricular filling. So that's it. Now, how about the Purkinje fibers? Mauna pinaka-fastest mukondak o velocity or makapasa o impulse. Please take that note. Unsa slowest, unsa fastest. Okay. Um, absolute refractor, refractory period. Unsa man yung refractory period? It is actually the limit. Limitado ang action potential nga ma-generate. Okay. So, dili meaning, uh, I'm sorry, dili pasabot nga um, action potential. Sige siya ga-generate. Like, Walay, walay problem na himitabo or walay, ano, walay break, something like that. Absolute refractory period. What do you mean by that? This is the period of time which ang next action potential absolutely cannot be generated. So this time reflects the responsiveness of the heart cells to a stimuli. Okay, for the Proceeding reports, um, there will be mga cardiac drugs that may affect the refractory period of the cells to make the heart more or less responsive. Okay, so that's the point under conductivity. Let's move on sa autonomic influence. Okay, as I've said, the heart can generate action potential on its own. However, on sa may purpose sa autonomic nervous system. It can influence the heart rate and the rhythm as well as the strength of contraction to increase. Okay? Sorry, to increase or decrease. Okay? In what way, man? At na nang gibalik, let's just have an overview sa parasympathetic o sympathetic. Parasympathetic, basically, iyang gi, gi decrease, iyang gi inhibit. Sympathetic, iyang gi increase, iyang gi speed up. So, that's it. Okay. Um, basically, kaning parasympathetic or sympathetic, they both works together to help the heart meet the body's demand. Very important sila ha. Okay. Let's move on sa myocardial contraction. Okay. Mananaman taog pa ko sa electrical stimulation of the heart cells or kanang mechanism sa action potential. Now, the question is, what would be the end result if na stimulate na ang heart cells or na ane action potential? There will be, please remember, there will be a unified contraction of the atria and ventricle which move the blood throughout the vascular system. Take that note. Okay, sarcomere. This is the basic unit of the cardiac muscle. Ang sarcomere na siya duha ka contractile proteins. We have the actin and the myosin. Please take a look at wang illustration. Ang actin kaning violet nga very thin siya, thin filament ni siya. Kani siya dere. I hope makita ninyo na point sa laser laser nato. Okay, this is the actin, thin filament. How about the myosin? Ang myosin, kanin color red. Color red nga na ay mga projections. Kanin baga, kanin thick filament. This is the myosin. Now, actin and myosin are anchored by the Z-bands. Kanin naasa kilid. Here, kanin color blue ba niya? Oh, yeah. Kanin naasa each side, sa left and right, Z-bands. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Actin and myosin, mga contractile proteins ni sila, actin and myosin readily react with each other. They react with each other. Okay, but remember, please remember, during um, resting state or at rest, at rest, ha, dili, ano, at rest, they are kept apart. They are kept apart by the protein, what we call troponin. Kaning circle, gali, Okay, kanin circle dere. This is the troponin. So meaning, ang troponin barrier siya between ni actin ug myosin if in rest period or naasa resting state. Okay? 
So that's it. Remember, okay, kanisha, ako ng nansyon di ba ang calcium ganina. Remember sa action potential, it is in the phase 2. Okay, inani man siya. Um, ang mga sodium, di ba, if na, what do you call this? If nin-stimulate na ang koan, mudepolarize na, meaning manulod na itong mga sodium. Okay, then it is in the phase 2 nga ang cell malas permeable siya, pasabot galisod na ug sulod ang sodium. So, if galisod na sulod ang sodium, musulod si calcium. Okay? Now, this is the very importance of calcium. Pag sulod ni calcium, it actually plays a very important role nga mureact siya sa troponin. Okay? Unsa may buhaton ni calcium sa troponin. Okay? Calcium will inactivate its function. Okay? Inactivate. Okay, and then therefore, um, meaning dili na makip apart ni troponin si actin ug si myosin, di ba barrier man siya? So dili na niya makip apart. Therefore, both of them will react with each other. Ang actin ug si si actin ug si myosin mo react forming what? Forming actomyosin bridges. Okay, so gamerge si uh, actin ug si myosin. Remember this one. As long as Calcium, as long as calcium is present, the actomyosin bridges will form or continue to form. This actually allows the shortening and contracting of the sarcomere. Shortening and contracting. The shortening of these sarcomeres causes the contraction and pumping action of the heart cell. So, unsa pasabot shortening of sarcomere? What do you mean by shortening of sarcomere? This is actually the degree um of shortening pasabot the strength of contraction ang basis please remember ang basis sa contraction is determined by the amount of calcium present meaning if mas daghan ang calcium mas daghan sad ang bridge na ma form and there will be what there will be stronger contraction therefore what is the relationship between calcium and contraction Directly proportional. Okay. Um, next, we are going to tackle, um, I hope, na sabtan ang myocardial contraction. Next, electrocardiography. Okay. We are in the halfway na. Electrocardiography. This is the process of recording the patterns of electrical impulses as they move through the heart. Yang gi kuan monitor ang electric, electrical impulses dere. Question. Un sa galit tung mga pathways where impulses are delivered, again and again asa magsugod, SA node down to the last, which is the Purkin G fibers. Okay. Ang atong ECG machine, it is a very important diagnostic tool pag um mo care ta sa patient nga sa card sa patient nga na ay cardiac disorder or mga cardiac patient para ma check for different heart conditions. Okay. Ang machine, iyang gidetect ang pattern sa electrical impulses o sa conduction sa heart. And it will now trans translate the informations into a recorded pattern. Kabantay mo, if you'll take a look sa cardiac monitor or kanang mga printout sa paper or calibrated paper, atong makitaan kay wave form. Okay. ECG. What is ECG? This is the measure of electrical activity, not the mechanical activity of the heart. Take note, ECG do not provide information about the mechanical activity of the heart, only the electrical activity. Next, cardiac output. Please remember, unsa important sa cardiac output, very important kay ang cardiac output. But before that, let us define first on Sanisha. Cardiac output is the volume of blood being pumped by the heart. Volume of the blood being pumped by the heart. Now, what is the important aspect of cardiac output? What do you think? It is actually the degree to which whether the heart is doing its job of pumping blood out to all of the tissues or not. So, pasabot, if kulang yung mga cardiac output, dili siya in, in, in normal, um, there is something wrong with the pumping, there is something long, wrong sa pag-pump sa blood out sa mga tissues, okay, inana siya. So, very important kayo mabalan ang cardiac output. Next, okay, please take a look sa ato ang um, screen, sa illustration. Okay, this is the normal 
ECG waveform which is made up of five main waves. Okay, please listen. Important kayo ni mga main waves. Okay, P wave. Unsa maning P wave? Here, kanin pinakauna. I hope makita ninyo. This one, P wave. P wave, um, once you see kaning P wave, it gives you an idea that this is what? This is atrial contraction or atrial depolarization. Parehara na sila, ang contraction or depolarization, synonymous na siya. Okay, again, ang P wave, it gives you an idea nga kani siya, ah, atrial contraction ni siya, if makita ka ani. This one. Next, how about the QRS complex? Kanin, Q, R, and then S. Kanin, next dere. Ang saan Q? Q is the representation of the bundle of fees. Asa galing na lukit ang bundle of fees sa middle sa heart, sa septum. Okay? How about the RS? Ang RS, representation ni siya na ventricles ni siya. Okay, now, ang kanin QRS complex, it simply represents depolarization or the same as contraction sa bundle of his and the ventricle. Usay pasabot, meaning the ventricle contracts in your QRS complex. So if ang P wave atrial contraction, what is the QRX complex? This is ventricular contraction. Okay, next, how about the T wave? T wave, it interprets after the QRS, this is the T wave here. I hope makita ninyo. This is, um, it interprets the repolarization, meaning relaxation sa ventricle. This means the ventricle, after ni contract siya sa QRS, mo relax siya sa T wave. Please take that note. Okay, to summarize it, ang atuang P wave, sa ni siya? Atrial contraction. Ang atuang QRS, on sa ni siya? Ventricular contraction. How about the T wave? This is ventricular relaxation. Okay, here's the thing. If you're gonna ask, if naka-notice mo, if nakabantay mo, why is it ang ventricle na ay contraction and relaxation nga makita sa ECG waveform while ang atria contraction only? Diba ang QRS? Ug ang T wave kay ventricles man siya, both contraction and relaxation. Why is it nganong ang P wave ang naa niya kay contraction ra? Nganong dili makita ang pag ano, uh, pag relax sa atria? Why is it? Actually, um the repolarization or the relaxation of the atria mo na siya ginatawag nga TA wave. Please remember TA wave, monib relaxation sa atrium or the atria. It actually occurs dere na siya sa QRS complex dere, okay? And it is usually not seen sa normal nga ECG waveform. Why? Makita ra siya sa mga conditions like if ang patient na ay atrial hypertrophy. If na siya atrial hypertrophy, ma appear TA wave or the Relaxation of the atrium may appear around the QRS complex. So that's it. I hope na sabtan. Next, what the critical points of the ECG and approximate values for the normal intervals. Now let's lantawo na to ang ihang shape, ihang normal interval, interval pila ihang pila ka second siya. Okay, please take a look sa P here. P sa gitu ni P atrial contraction. And the R, PR interval here, it reflects the normal delay of conduction, okay? And it accounts for 0.16 seconds, okay? 0.16 seconds. How about the Q and T interval here? Q, OCT, okay? It reflects the critical timing of what? The depolarization and the repolarization of the ventricles. So short lang siya. 0.3 seconds from Q to T. How about the S to T? S T segment. It actually reflects the uh, important information about sa repolarization or about sa relaxation sa ventricles. Very short kaayo because it only accounts for 0.1 seconds. Okay. So moving on, um, we are done with sa ato ang ECG. So electrocardiography now, um, please take a note because makita na to sa 
types of arrhythmias ang mga ECG forms? Normal ba or dili normal? Okay, let's move on to the subtopic arrhythmias. Ano sa maning arrhythmias? This is the disruption in cardiac rate or rhythm. Okay, or dysrhythmia. Sinanimus renesia. In answering the question, what can change the cardiac rate and rhythm? Kung sa'yo maka-influence, what factors? Okay, there are actually many factors. Example, drugs. May it be side or adverse effects? Also, acidosis or kadang acidotic state sa atong body or decreased oxygen levels or even if night changes atong electro electrolyte levels or naabay build up sa atong waste product. They can influence our cardiac rate and rhythm. So, arrhythmias are very critical if they interfere with the work of the heart and can dis disrupt the cardiac output. Cardiac output. Okay? Which eventually will affect every cell in the body. Now, let us discuss what are the types of arrhythmias. Okay? Um, we have the sinus arrhythmias first. Okay? Sinus arrhythmias. Unsa manisha? Once you note this kind of arrhythmia, the heartbeat is just faster or slower than normal. Again, ang sinus arrhythmias, iyahang heartbeat faster or slower than normal. Pero, iyahang ECG pattern kay normal ra. We have, we have under uh, types of sinus arrhythmias, we have the sinus tachycardia and sinus bradycardia. So simply, tachycardia, meaning faster than normal. Bradycardia, slower than normal. So that's it. Next, we have the supraventricular arrhythmias. Okay, the problem actually here sa supraventricular arrhythmias, asa nga chamber sa heart? Is it in ventricle or atria? It is actually in the on the atria because when we say supra, that's above. A yeah, supraventricular man, meaning above the ventricle. Okay, ang yan lang ng diseases. We'll be discussing that in your cardiovascular problems sa third year. Next slide. Okay, thank you very much. Under it, we have the paroxysmal atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, and atrial... Again, you don't worry about that. Diseases, go to the next. Atrial ventricular block as well. Next. We also have ventricular arrhythmias. Sabutabul na namin ko. Atrial ventricular block. That means... There is an obstruction of the flow among impulses from the atria to the ventricle. You know, atrioventricular block. And like, it's in the name. So that's how to worry. And arrhythmia means absence, rhythm. So arrhythmia means absence of rhythm. This rhythmia is actually similar to arrhythmia. But if you want to be very specific, this rhythmia is abnormal rhythm. When you say fast or slow, it can still abnormal. So we do it uh, interchangeably. We call it the JWS dyslipia or, or arrhythmia. But in reality, if you want to be very specific again, arrhythmia uh, is absence of rhythm. Well, this rhythmia is uh, okay? abnormal rhythm. It's a DYF or this is abnormal. A means a absence without. Okay, without rhythm. So that's about it. So you have known the the well, the, the waves na on say atrial contraction, ventricular contraction, ventricular facial and all of that. And you don't you know also that in a normal ECG you don't see any wave corresponding to your atrial red polarization. And you know what is red polarization and what is dead polarization. So don't have to worry about this. So skip it. Go to the next. Okay, thank you very much, Doc. It was much, well Doc. explained, man, how the impulses are conducted from the SA node to the ventricular muscles. It, is well, it was well explained, so continue. Okay, thank you, Doc. So basically, according to summarize, the uh, arrhythmias that I have mentioned upset the normal balance at one cardiovascular system. So that's it. Next, we are now going to tackle the uh, circulation. Okay, the steady circulation of blood is very essential for the proper functioning of all the body's organ, including the heart. Now, the circulation of the blood follows two courses. Mauna ni siya, ang heart or heart lung or or sorry or pulmonary circulation, and then the systemic circulation. So please take a look at the illustration. Again, kaning blue na arrow, which is the right side of the heart, mauna ni siya ang 
pulmonary circulation. So, musulod siya sa right side, yeah, no, ah, right side, right, right side of the heart, and then going out sa lungs. So, that's it. How about the systemic circulation? Kaning naa sa left side sa heart. So, from the lungs, okay, then paingun siya sa heart, then to all um, out sa cells, paingun sa cells. So, that's it. The blue and the red arrow. Now, let's more uh, talk deeply about this one. Okay. Um, take a look at the next illustration. Okay. The blood flows through the systemic and pulmonary vasculature circuits. I've already explained this. Okay. Remember, please remember this one. Word. The blood moves from the areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. High to low. Please take that note. This system, kanisha, sa to illustration, this system is a closed system, meaning walay opening, walay holes. Thus, the blood cannot leak out. That is why na ay pressure differences para ang blood will always flow in the direction in which it is intended to flow. Okay, what do you mean by pressure differences, man? What is its importance? Okay, let us first focus sa pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary, please focus kanin color blue. Kanisha, na asa right side of the heart as well. Pulmonary circulation. Okay. Um, question sa pulmonary circulation is it ox is it carrying oxygenated blood or deoxygenated blood? It is carrying. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Irene. Um, that is carrying deoxygenated blood. If ni increase, um, wait. Uh, if it is carrying deoxygenated blood, by the way, kanisha. Let's focus on the right side of the heart. Okay, ang right atrium, low pressure area ni siya. Now, what will happen if ang blood ni flow siya kani nastaas ni flow siya pa ingon sa atrium or sa atria? What will happen? Of course, the pressure increases. Can you see the blood? Now, the principle sa ako ang dimension ganina. Diba, the blood moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. If ni increased ang pressure sa atrium, meaning mas greater ang pressure niya compared sa ventricle, we are talking sa right side of the heart. So, from high to low, ang blood, syempre, mo paingon sa ventricle. Okay, low pressure man ang ventricle. Then, after that, it will continue flowing until it reaches the lungs. Kay ang lungs, low pressure man. So, that's it. In such case, nga same, the same, similar o pressure ang chambers at ang heart, magkasalimuang na ang flow sa blood. That is the importance of pressure differences. I hope you got that. Okay, now let's move on sa systemic circulation. Focus ta sa illustration, kanin right side, no, the left side of the heart, rather. Kanin color red. Okay, please take that note. Okay, the same principle siya, high to low ang pressure, but na uniqueness ang process. In what way? There is an arterial system, or what we call the resistance system. Okay, it is, uh, no, um, the resistance can be increased or decreased based on the need of the body, based on the need of our body. Now, question, what is the major site of resistance? It is the arterioles, major site of resistance. Arterioles have the ability to block the blood to some areas of the body and they also allow or ilang di divert ang blood sa areas where it is needed more. Kung asa siya, mas kinahanglan. Muad to siya. This is also the reason why arterial is one. Please remember, this is the reason nga nung ang arterial one of the main regulators of the blood pressure. Okay. Now, um, let's have a closer look sa, again sa ato ang diagram. Okay, here. I hope uh, makita siya. Kanisha, the venous system on the arterial system, meaning kanin blue o kanin red, the venous system and the ar arterial system are connected with the so-called capillary system. Asan yung capillary system? It is where ang blood 
nag-flow na asa siya, asa gamit si red ug si blue. Please take a look asa gamit si red ug si blue. Here. This one, this is the capillary system. Here. Okay? Muni siya capillary system. Now here's the thing. Kaning red, as you can see this one. Kaning mga kaning color red. As you can see on the illustration, the color of the blood is bright red. So oxygenated siya, of course, oxygenated. While kaning blue, dili literal nga color blue ang blood ha. That's just a representation para ma distinguish sila. It's not color blue. It's actually dark red ang blood. If dark red ang blood, meaning deoxygenated siya. Okay, to explain this shortly, kaning blue, it is carrying with it oxy um no carbon dioxide eh. Car it is carrying with it carbon dioxide and waste product sa pulmonary circulation. Kani di ba? Pag sulod niya, mugawas siya sa pulmonary artery, then paing siya sa lungs, pulmonary circulation siya. And then pag abot niya sa lungs, ma-oxygenated siya. Kabantay mo na ay shift sa fluid from blue to red, from deoxygenated to oxygenated. Okay? Na-shifting na nahitabo. Okay? Nag-carry na siya o oxygen and nutrients. Okay? Nahimo na siyang red, ka-carry na siyang oxygen o nutrients. And it will not enter the heart. Okay, then i-distribute na sad siya pag paingon sa left atrium, ventricle, then going to the aorta, then of course, iya i-distribute sa system. Okay, kay na naman yung mga nutrients o na yung mga oxygen. Now, um, as you can see, the bottom part, kani siya diri, naasad na shift na nahitabo from red to blue. Okay, meaning from oxygenated, needy oxygenated na po siya. Then it will now go back to the heart, then repeat the process lang siya. Remember, it is in the capillary system where conversion happens. Okay, conversion from from the oxygenated to oxygenated or otherwise. Bali. Now, um, that's what we call actually capillary fluid shift. Capillary fluid shift. Okay, the shifting is carefully regulated by a balance between what? Balance between hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure, the HP and the OP. Now, please remember unsa ilahang difference. HP meaning pulling fluid out. Please take that note. Pulling fluid out. Then on oncotic pressure, pulling fluid in. Now, if there will be a disruption sa hydrostatic pressure, di ba ang hydrostatic kay pulling fluid out man, if dili na ma carefully regulated, what will happen? Meaning, na ay fluid na bilin. Kaya wala man na, na pagawas ang fluid. Okay, ang, pinaka, ang most appropriate term na if it is going out is push out. Pull in, push out. Okay, oh, so sorry. Uh, the pushing out is more appropriate rather than pulling out. So, yeah, go. I'm, I'm sorry, Doc. Okay, rather, please, um, let's change this lang. Pushing fluid out. So, if na push out, if na, na disruption sa pag push sa fluid out, what will happen? So, may metabon, meaning na ay mabilin nga fluid sa capillary. So, what will happen if na mabilin na fluid? There is? There is edema or na ay swelling ng mahitabo. Okay, so therefore, ang ato ang HP. Eh, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. That is exactly the opposite. What is edema, by the way? Edema is the presence of fluid outside of the blood vessel. So oh, you okay. said when when there is something wrong with pushing the fluid out the fluid is retained inside your blood vessel so if it is retained in your blood vessel there will be no edema so say it that is exactly the opposite i am sorry ang, Dr. Ang, ang dapat ang tanana, when there is a problem with pulling the fluid back into the blood vessel that is where edema occurs again when there is that there is a problem in pulling back the fluid into the blood vessel, that's where edema occurs. It is not the problem of retaining fluid inside the blood vessel. However, if you increase the fluid inside the blood vessel, you will have fluid overload. So in your hunger, circulatory system. That is the effect. I, I was thinking of mental fluid overload, but then you said the opposite thing.
So ano ni ha? Let me explain that clearly to everybody. If pananglita, ano lang, simple lang tayo. Pananglita kung gamit mo o strainer, pananglita nun. No? Yung strainer, gamitin ka na inyong stockings. Sa unang panahon lang, gawin ka na magsala ka o lubi dito, magdata ka o lubi. Uh, gamit yung stockings, itong mga buslot ng stockings, muna yung sasagin doon sa una, sa mga baray-baryo. We use that. I grew up in the town, so we use that. Itong karaan ng stockings. Yes, we do that. Pero, dahil yung balik na strainer, barato yung kaya yung mga wire na strainer. Now, ano na yung example, Ana? Kung mag-strain ka o lubi, bitaw mag-gata ka, when you extract the, the juice from the desiccated coconut, baso ni mo na sa tubig, ibutang mo sa strainer. In this case, ibutang mo sa imong stockings. Then, imong squeeze out ang stockings to push the fluid out of the stockings. Imagine the stockings to be your blood vessel. And you're pushing the fluid out of your blood vessel. Now, that is your hydrostatic pressure. We call your filtration pressure. Ah, uh, uh, With regards to your uh, yeah, osmotic pressure means the pulling of the fluid back into the circulatory system, into your blood vessel. That means, unsa may pwede ni mong buhaton para ni mong ma-pull ma- ma- o balik ang fluid into the circulatory system, you have to have a hypertonic solution inside your blood vessel. What is hypertonic? Hypertonic meaning ispiso kayo ay mga blood. Dapat ispiso kayo ay mga blood para ang tubig will go into the ispiso ng blood. Ano nang moving sa tubig? Ha? The tubig will always flow to an area with a higher concentration of solute. So the two movement of water goes from area at lower concentration of solute to an area at higher concentration of solute. That is the movement of water. That is called you know, osmosis. Osmosis is only the movement of fluid or water. So what is the difference between diffusion and osmosis? Diffusion is the movement of solute. Solute ang mumog sa diffusion, ha? Bili ang solvent. Water is the solvent. Water gani mumog. Osmosis na siya from an area of lesser concentration of solute to an area of greater concentration of solute, meaning to an area na very spiso, very viscous, viscosity, increase in viscosity. So, mas spiso ang area, mas more nga mo, padulong dito ang mga tubig. Remember that. Do not ever forget that. Now, what are the, what are the substances that can act as a, an osmotic substance, meaning that can pull water with it? Protein is the number one. Protein is a substance that can pull water back into the circulatory system. So, kung gamay ka protein sa mga lawas, mag-hypoprotein niya gamit ka, mag-edema ka. Why? Because the fluid that goes out of your capillaries cannot go back to your uh, circulatory system because of the absence of protein or less protein. Mauna nga, kung gamay ka protein, mag-edema ka. Another thing is sodium. Sodium can pull the water back into the circulatory system. Again, let me say that and do not forget this. Wherever sodium goes, water follows. Do not forget that. Wherever sodium goes, water follows. Muna kung mukhaon mo dagang bulan, mukhaon mo dagang ginamos, uhawon mo. You have to drink a lot of water para mag-neutralize ang hyperosmolarity sa inyong blood by eating too much of your soul. Again, ha? Ang salt will pull water. Also, your protein will pull water. Wherever there is hyperviscosity or hyperosmolarity, fluid will go through it. Of course, through a semi-permeable membrane. So what is the semi-permeable membrane we're talking about here? It is the walls of your blood vessel. Don't say semi-permeable membrane. Musulud din ha. So I am just correcting you. Sa imong idea, because that is entirely the opposite. You may continue. Um, thank you so much, Doc. Um, a bit choppy ka sa ako ang end, ang end, but well understood na Thank you. Um, naaray clarification ato. Sabot, sayop ako interpretation. Dili, um, dili pasabot sa, if na disruption sa HP, pasabot di ay ang, ang nasuban o gawa sa fluid. Dili na nabili na fluid. That's why there is an edema. Okay? Another. Okay, um, I think na I noise for a while.
Okay. Next. Um, another, di ba ang arterial system is the resistance, ah, di ba ang arterial system is the resistance system na asad mo equate ng venous system, which is also the capacitance system. So, if ang arterial system is equal to resistance system, the venous system is the capacitance system. Let me explain that. Let me explain that. When you say resistance vessel, Resistance vessel has the capacity to resist the flow of blood. One of the resistance vessel, which means renal arteries can either dilate or constrict depending on the area. Because it is, the term is resistance, it resists the flow of blood. Meaning it can constrict to the max para dili mo flow yung dugo. Ano na ha? Yes, ha? Okay, going okay, back. Thank you, ah, kajat, kajat. Going back. Now, again, yeah. resistance is meaning uh, resisting the flow of blood. Muna kita ang resistance, ha? So, the lesser the, uh, the lesser the diameter of your artery, the greater will be the resistance to the flow of blood. So, the uh, greater the diameter of your artery, the lesser the resistance. Pwede mo na doon ang kanal. Kung kanal gamay tayo, mag-desert sulod ang tubig. So, kailangan i-press, i-push yung magmaya ang tubig para makasulod sa kanal. Pero pananglitan ko ang kanal, bali na kuha tayo ang wheel ball lang, free-flowing ang tubig. There will be no resistance at all. Ito mo lang ipasabot ang resistance. Well, what is your venous? Venous na ang presentation na. The venous system is only called a capacitance vessel, which means it only accepts blood by capacity, according to its capacity. Dili kayo siya active, dili kayo, may term is kayo, dili kayo siya active, mo, cons mo constrict o mo dilate ang mga venous blood vessel. Why? May lipis siya kayo. Doon may lipis siya kayo yung mamasa. Fibers siyang ginagay. Hindi mo siya active yung constrict o mo dilate. But yes, it can still constrict, it can still dilate. Okay? So, hindi nito na-active. So, we don't consider it as such. So, by capacity lang. Kung ba siya isulod ka lang dito sa inyong mga veins, dawaton na po na siya. Mudailate na lang siya kay i-push man yung mga iba. Masang balon mo, buro tra. So, sige, you continue. Because I'll be discussing the whole official related video. Thank you, Doc. I actually am going to explain the difference. Pero nasultina. Thank you very much, Doc. Okay, let us move on to to the coronary circulation. Okay. What is the important ingredient for the heart muscle to keep contracting? It needs a constant supply of oxygenated blood. Its primary function is to supply blood to heart muscles. Okay. In order for the heart muscles to be nourished, so okay. there must be circulation. Blood vessel supplying your coronary or your, cor or your heart or your coronary blood vessel, coronary artery. Is the right and the left. Okay, next slide. We don't have to discuss the very details of this. Ang ato lang ang physiology lang because I presume you have discussed this fully in your anatomy. So, go na ta sa inyo ang physiology because this is very important with regards to your subject na pharmacology. We will concentrate on the effects of the drug. Okay, continue. Okay, thank you, Doc. I will discuss the pulse pressure. Since there is a contraction and relaxation, the pressure na feel sa coronary artery is the difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. That's we call the pulse pressure. So that's systolic minus diastolic. Very importantly, ang oxygenated blood, it is constantly supplied, reaching every cardiac muscle. So what's the result? The heart keeps contracting, the heart keeps pumping. But take note, Problems can arise if there is an imbalance between the supply of oxygen delivered and the myocardial demand for oxygen. Now, let's discuss what are the factors or the main forces to determine the heart's use of oxygen or oxygen consumption. We have the heart rate, the preload, the afterload, and the contractility. Now, let's discuss, let's discuss their relationship. Heart rate. What is the uh, relationship between heart rate and oxygen consumption? The more the heart has to pump, the more oxygen it requires. So meaning the relationship is 
directly proportional. How about the preload? What is the diff what is the relationship between the preload, the contraction, and the oxygen consumption? Here, um, the more blood that is returned sa heart, the greater the stretch sa ventricle. Thus, it will be harder to pump the blood. By the way, the volume of the blood in the system is a determinant of preload. Now, what's the relationship between preload and contraction? Preload and contraction is inversely proportional, but directly proportional to oxygen consumption. Please take that note. After load. What, what is the relationship sa afterload sa uh, afterload sa contraction? The higher the resistance in the system, the harder the heart will have to contract para ma-force, ma-open ang valve, para ma-pump ang blood along. So, by the way, the blood pressure is a measure of afterload. So, what's the relationship between the afterload and contraction? Inversely proportional, but directly proportional siya sa oxygen consumption. Now, how about the contractility? Uh, kanin contractility mo increase ni siya if daghang influx of calcium paingon sa heart cell. This will cause more force of contraction and also more need for oxygen sa mga heart cells. Now, question, what is the relationship between contractility, calcium, and oxygen consumption? Directly proportional. Okay, now let's move on to the systemic arterial pressure. So, the contractions sa uh, left ventricle, since systemic man siya, so we're talking about the left ventricle, the left side of the heart. Uh, it creates a pressure that continues to force blood into all the branches of the aorta. The pressure is at its greatest during systole or the cardiac contraction, and the pressure is or falls at its lowest level during diastole. So basically, ang measurement sa both diastolic, the systolic, and the diastolic pressure indicates the pressure the ventricle has to overcome to pump the blood out of the heart. The ventricle, huh? not the atrium. Now, hypotension, simply lower the normal ang blood ang, ang pressure. So there is a dramatic fall sa pressure. Question, what are the causes of hypotension? We have the loss of blood volume, excessive vasodilation or kind of failure sa heart muscle to pump effectively. Moving on to hypertension, meaning kabalo na taan ay constant excessive high blood pressure sa kwan, hypertension. Kani phenomena, phenomenon, it can actually damage the blood vessel, kay mo cause siya og disruption sa blood flow sa tissues. Also, Kapoy or tiring na kaayo on the part sa ato ang heart muscle because na ay increase of myocardial oxygen consumption. Question, what are the cause of hypertension? It is the neural stimulation of the blood vessels that causes them to constrict. Pero ang pinaka big, no, yung pinaka-core dyan nga, kung dili identified nga cause. Okay, vasomotor tone. Unsa man yung vasomotor tone? The impulses work to dilate or to constrict the vessels and to maintain the muscle tone. So, for what reason man nga nung ato i-maintain ang muscle tone? So that the vessels remain patent and responsive. Patent and responsive. Please take that note. Okay? Now, if increased ang iyong pressure nga needed, syempre increase po ang sympathetic flow. Pero if ang pressure kay na sobraan ra po, of course, iyang i-decrease ang sympathetic flow. That's it. Now, let's move on sa renin angiotensin aldosterone system. I'm gonna discuss this, uh, the detail. So, please, very important kayo niya for the proceeding reports. Okay. To continue, there is actually another determinant sa blood pressure. We have the this one, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Question, in what scenario man ang renin angiotensin aldosterone system ma-activate? Please note, if ang blood flow sa kidney ni decrease, the system will be activated. If ni decrease ang blood flow, please take that note. Unsa ni renin? This one. Renin is an enzyme. Okay, let's move on kay para mas maklaro. Okay, renin is an enzyme gi-release siya digikan sa kidney, specifically sa JG sa cells, juxtaglomerular cells. Now, the renin is released, okay? And then, matransport ni siya padulong sa liver 
Mag-unsa man siya sa liver. Con it will convert the enzyme angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. Please take that note. Kani siya, kaning activation. Pang angiotensinogen to angiotensin. Asa ni siya take place? Sa liver. Now, if na-convert na ang angiotensin 1, angiotensin 1 will travel to the lungs, from liver to lungs, and then, with the help sa angiotensin converting enzyme, or the ACE, so meaning angiotensin 1 plus ACE, what will happen? It will then be converted to angiotensin 2. After that, what will happen? Ang angiotensin 2 mo travel siya throughout sa the body para mo react let's say nadali sa left side para mo react siya sa mga angiotensin 2 receptor site now if ni react na si angiotensin 2 sa iyang receptor site throughout the body what will happen it will actually cause severe vasoconstriction please take that note meaning what will happen if na ay severe vasoconstriction of course ang blood pressure mo saka mo taas mo increase so, what to do for this not to happen? What to do para mo increase ang, sorry, para mo decrease ang blood pressure? What to do? What's the solution? Take this note. Blood flow to the kidneys should be increased para mo decrease ang release sa ranin. Please take that note. In, 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 increase ang um, blood flow pengo sa kidney para mo decrease ang release serenin. Remember, I explained it earlier nga ma-trigger ang RAAS if there is a decreased blood flow to the kidney. Therefore, what is the relationship between the blood flow to the kidney and the renin angiotensin aldosterone system? Inversely proportional. Very good. Okay. If there is a decreased blood flow to the kidney, pasabot ang system is activated. Munang inversely proportional. Another question. What is the relationship between renin and blood pressure? Very important. What is the relationship between renin and blood pressure? That is directly proportional. Kadi ba, if there is an increase sa release sa renin, ang blood pressure musaka. Kaya na ay severe vasoconstriction. Also, please take a look at this uh, right side. Ang angiotensin 2, makonvert siya into angiotensin 3. What will happen if na-convert na siya into angiotensin 3? There will be a release of aldosterone. Musaka ang aldosterone. O sa gali, purpose aldosterone at nanengi discuss sa last um, mga reports and sa purpose niya, aldosterone um, for sodium increases sodium reabsorption. Okay. Also, naapoy stimulation sa release sa ADH. If na, na ay na-release na aldosterone, naapoy ADH. O sa gali, purpose sa ADH sa previous discussion, water reabsorption. So, what will happen if nisaka ang adosuro, nisaka ang ADH? What will happen? Ang blood volume mo increase. Therefore, mo increase sad ang blood flow sa kidney. So, ang release sa renin mo decrease. I hope nasabdan. Then, that's it. This is the reason nga nung ang RAAS help maintain the blood pressure within a range that, ins that ensures uh, the delivery of the blood to all the tissues or what we call the perfusion. So I hope na kuha na siya. That's the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now, natriuretic peptide. Unsa may importance sa natriuretic peptide? Dati actually duha pero let's focus sa atrial natriuretic peptide. Also we have brain natriuretic peptide. Okay. Um what is their function? What is their importance? They actually act to inhibit the renin angiotensin of those urine system. Hindi inhibit ang RAAS para mukos o diuretic, natriuretic, and now question, what will happen to the blood pressure if hindi inhibit ang renin angiotensin of those urine system? It will decrease. Ang blood pressure will decrease. Now, another, um, very importantly, they are broken down in the body by the enzyme neprilisin. Take that note, they are broken in the body by the enzyme, neprilisin. Okay, moving on to the last subtopic, venous pressure. 
not just in the artery, blood in the veins as well exerts a pressure that may sometimes rise above normal. This can happen if ang atong heart is not pumping effectively and is unable to pump out all of the blood that is trying to return to it. So meaning, if na ay an, um, dili mapump ang taro, ang blood na ay blood congestion ng hitabo, just waiting to enter the heart. The venous system become congested with blood. Pasabot, there will be excessive accumulation or clogging. Now, it paves the way for heart failure. Summoning heart failure. If the heart muscle cannot effectively pump the blood sa system, through the system, ang blood, if dili man siya pump effectively, ang blood syempre mobalik sa heart through the veins, then the system becomes congested. Can balik man siya? This is actually the condition we mainly know as heart failure or the congestive heart failure. Okay, the rise in venous pressure is due to what? The imbalance of the HP and the OP. OP. Remember, on the HP, HP is the pushing fluid out, and on OP, that is pulling fluid in. Tanisha, sa heart failure, mas higher ang HP. Mas higher ang gi push ng fluid out. So, na ay loss of fluid in the tissue. Katong explain ni Dr. Nina, there will be a shift of fluid accounts and the shift of fluid will account for edema na ay swelling. Kedaghan naman ang fluid sa gawas that, that we can notice in the heart failure. That's why here, the pulmonary edema results when the left side of the heart fails. Take note, pulmonary edema if ang left side ni fail. How about peripheral abdominal and liver edema? If ang right side sa heart ni fail. There are actually many numerous myriad of drugs that are used to treat heart, heart failure. Each of their mechanisms affect the vascular system at any of these areas in an attempt to return a balance to the pressure in the system. So that's it. Um, I think that marks the end of my report. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. I hope uh, you've got some things from my discussion that are very relevant in order for us to understand the preceding reports. So thank you. I will now give the floor to Ms. Marigomen. Okay, so can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, um, good day, everyone. I will be reporting about the drugs affecting blood pressure. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so looking back, the cardiovascular system is a closed system of blood vessels that is responsible for delivering oxygenated blood to the tissues and removing waste product from the tissues. So next slide. So this is how the blood in the system flows. And this is this was discussed earlier in to the um in the introduction. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> okay. So um, the same with this one, it was discussed in the introduction. Okay, that's the definition of hypertension, hypotension, and shock. Okay, next slide. Okay, so the pressure in the cardiovascular system is determined by three elements, which are heart rate, stroke volume, or um, which is the amount of blood that is pumped out of the ventricle with each heartbeat primarily determined by the volume of blood in the system. And lastly, the total um, peripheral resistance, which is the resistance of the muscular arteries to the blood being pumped through. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay. 
So the small arterioles are thought to be one of the most important factors in determining peripheral resistance because um, they have the smallest diameter and they are um, able to almost stop blood flow into capillary beds when they constrict, which builds up tremendous pressure in the art arteries behind them as they prevent the blood from flowing through. And for the arterioles, um, they are very responsive to stimulation from the sympathetic nervous system and they constrict when the sympathetic system is stimulated, which increase the total peripheral resistance and the blood pressure. The body uses this responsiveness to regulate blood pressure on a constant basis to ensure that there is enough pressure in the system to deliver sufficient blood to the brain. Next slide, please. So, um, baroreceptors or pressure receptors. So, as the blood leaves the left ventricle through the aorta, it influences the specialized cells in the part of the aorta, which is the baroreceptors or the pressure receptors. These, um, the similar cells are also located in the carotid arteries, which then deliver blood directly to the brain. So cardiovascular center or vasomotor sen center. The sensory input from the baroreceptors is received in the medulla in an area called cardiovascular center or which we call vasomotor center. So if the pressure is high, the medulla stimulates vasodilation and a decrease in cardiac rate and output. And this causes this causes the pressure in the system to drop. And if the pressure in, um, if the pressure is low, the medulla directly stimulates an increase in cardiac rate and output and vasoconstriction. This increases total peripheral resistance and this raises the blood pressure. Next slide, please. Okay, so bioreceptor flex. Um, these functions continually to maintain blood pressure within a predetermined range of normal. So as you can see in this figure, um, this is the control of blood pressure. The vasomotor center in the medulla responds to stimuli from aortic acid and carotid baroreceptors to cause sympathetic stimulation. Then the kidneys release renin to activate the renin angiotensin system which cause vasoconstriction and increase blood volume. Next slide, please. Okay, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Um, it is a compensatory mechanism to help ensure that blood flow is maintained and it is activated when the blood pressure um, within the kidneys falls, which was um, discussed earlier. Okay, next slide. So um, here, the system of um, RAAS, this was also explained by um, our previous reporter. Okay, so next slide. Hypertension. So when a person's blood pressure is above normal limits for a sustained period, a diagnosis of hypertension is made. And we have... Um, two main types of hypertension, which are um, essential hypertension, uh, which is a hypertension with no known, no known cause, and secondary hypertension, or um, which is um, high blood pressure resulting from a known cause. So next slide, please. Okay, we have underlying danger of hypertension of any type Okay, we have um, um, prolonged force on vessels of the vascular system. The muscles in the arterial system eventually thicken, leading to a loss of responsiveness in the system. And we also have um, 
left ventricle thickens because the muscle must con constantly work hard to expel blood at a greater force. And um, there is thickening of the heart muscle and the increased pressure that the muscle has to generate every time it contracts increase the workload of the heart and the risk of um, coronary artery disease as well. And the inner linings of the arteries, they are damaged by the force of the blood being propelled against them, making these vessels susceptible to atherosclerosis and to narrowing of the lumen of the vessels. Tiny vessels are also damaged and destroyed, which leads to um, loss of vision, um, kidney function, and um, cerebral function. Next slide, please. Okay, we have white coat hypertension. So this hypertension occurs when patients are only hypertensive when they are in their doctor's office um, while having their blood pressure measured. This was correlated to a sympathetic stress reaction and a tendency to tighten the muscles while waiting to be seen and during blood pressure measurement. Next slide. Okay, we have treatment guidelines. I mean, treatment recommendations for hypertension. So um, there, this is the treatment goals. So for the general population, um, 60 years or old, for 60 years or older, um, it should be less than 150 over less than 90. And for the general population under 60 years old, less than 140 over less than 90. And for patients 18 years or older with chronic kidney disease, it should be less than 140. Okay, but so less than 140 over 90. Okay, next slide. Next Take note slide. on that plan. Okay. We have treatment guidelines for non block patients, including diabetics. Um, we should initiate treatment with a thiazide diuretic, then calcium channel blocker, and geotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. Sigilang, we'll be discussing all this. So, next. So if goal of the blood pressure is not reached within a month of treatment, the clinician should increase the dose of the initial drug or add a second drug from one of the classes in recommendations. So um, which are the thiazide type, diuretic, calcium channel blocker, ACE inhibitor, or ARB. And the clinician should also continue to assess the blood pressure and adjust the treatment regimen until goal of the blood pressure is reached. Um, if goal of the blood pressure cannot be reached with the, uh, with the use of two drugs, a third drug from the list provided should be added until treated. An ACE inhibitor and an um, ARB should not be used together in the same patient. Okay. Just read on that. Sabutambul ni tanan, and it's not your concern. It's the concern of the physician, not you as nurses. Next slide. Okay. Okay. So we have hypotension. This is um, if blood pressure becomes too low, the vital centers in the brain as well as the rest of the tissues of the body may not receive enough oxygenated blood to continue functioning. Hypotension can progress into shock in which the body is in serious jeopardy as waste products accumulate and cells die from lack of oxygen. So, hypertension states can occur in the following situations. So, when the heart muscle is damaged and unable to pump effectively with severe blood or fluid loss, and when the volume drops dramatically, and also when there is extreme stress on the body's levels, and norepinephrine are depleted, leaving the body unable to respond, respond to stimu stimuli to raise blood pressure. Next slide, please. So, antihypertensive agents. These are drugs that are used to uh, treat hypertension. 
that were to alter the normal reflexes that control blood pressure. Next slide. So we have here our speech combination. You don't have to worry about the combination. It's not your problem. Next slide. Okay, next slide. So treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So these drugs block receptor sites for endothelin A and B in the endothelium and vascular smooth muscles. And this allows the vessels to relax and dilate, leaving the pressure um, on the artery. Okay, next slide. Next slide. So we have track clear. Um, what are these? What are these? These are anti. These are antihypertensive agents. Until uh, under what class? Um, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Okay, sige. Okay, so we have drug theory. It is an oral drug that is given. I um, just mentioned the mechanism of action directly. Oh, okay, next slide. No, 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 no. Read on the drug oh, and mechanism of action. Okay, oh, okay, a previous slide. Previous slide, please. Asa ng previous na huma naman to. Next slide. Next slide. Mo na first sa drug. So what are the? So um, drug clear. This interact with other drugs um, including ketoconazole, resetin, flavonoids, and oral contraceptive. Ano siya mekanism niya ula? Ano um, napa sa next slide? Oh, na pa sa next slide. Oh, sige, mention oh. this. You don't have to worry about oral or whatever. So, mention lang na siya nga drug, then look at the mechanism of action later. Tanawa niya, your sildenafil, your sadalafil, these are uh, drugs for impotence, di ba? For erectile dysfunction. Muna na mention na ito lang sa chapter, sa reproductive. So, it's not only para pa auto, it is also used for arterial hypertension because these are vasodilators. So, next slide. Okay, next slide. Okay. Ah, wala eh. Wala malagi mechanism of action ni mo Inday. Sige, padayon. Anti-hypertensive agents ni mo padayon. Sige. Okay. So, anti-hypertensive agents. This includes the AC inhibitors and the attentive to receptor blockers or ARBs, washing panel blockers and vasodilators. Next slide. We have also other antihypertensive agents. Um, we have diuretic agents, renin inhibitors, sympathetic nervous system drugs. So next one. So these are the drugs under um, ACE inhibitors. We have benazepin, which is indicated. Okay, um, hold on, hold on. Miss Bornea, are you around? Borneo, Kiana, are you around? Yes, doc. Okay, let me ask you, what is ACE? ACE, what is an ACE? Hmm. Sige. Oh, kinsa pa may lain akong makita. Dabede, kay moro moro mo gano'n ako mo. Cellphone na kung gamit nila kung kita. So, ba? 56 others siya. Antogon. Are you around, Antogon? Uh, yes. Okay. What is A? A, C, E. Again. Your AC, by the way, this is angiotensin converting enzyme, which converts your angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. ACE is found in the lungs. Again, ACE converts your angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. You don't have to worry with angiotensin 1, huh? It is not that effective, angiotensin 1. It is the angiotensin 2 that we have a problem because angiotensin 2 is one of the more powerful vasoconstrictors. So if the blood vessel contracts, it promotes hypertension. So that's why you have to inhibit the angiotensin converting enzyme. You should have an ACE inhibitor so that your blood vessel will dilate, you treat your hypertension. 
So, yeah, okay, since you are already in the hypertension, let me uh, discuss briefly the mechanism of hypertension control, of blood pressure control. Okay. Uh, asa man itong i-show na gutong imong heart na picture. Or katong silic circulation na lang, katong imong systemic or pulmonary circulation. If you still have it, saliw kong post din na. Sa lungog mo na ito, wala... I think nobody heard. On it, the dog. That one. Next, baka ito ang nabilo, ano, miss, ano, pinapaw. Below, pal. Pana, below. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes, now, sir. let's start yes, with this. Actually, there are three parameters in the control of blood pressure. Blood pressure, I'm talking about hyper or hypo. There are three parameters in the control of blood pressure. One is your heart. The second is your blood vessel. And the third is your blood. We have to concentrate on these three. The others would follow. Others, not on the belong to because these three are the primary contributors to the control of your blood pressure. Again, heart, heart rate. I mean, heart, blood vessel, and your blood. Do not ever forget that why. Because I would, I am going to simplify things for you how to treat hypertension. And you will simplify also how to study with regards to basing on these three parameters. Let's go first with the heart. The heart's function is to eject blood to supply the system with oxygenated blood. So that is the function of the heart. If that is the function of the heart, if the heart uh, decreases its rate of contraction, meaning hinay gamay rang yang contraction heart, what will happen to the delivery of the blood to the tissues? It will be lesser also. It is directly proportional. So if the heart increases its contractility, if it is rate of contraction, the more blood also goes out for the system. Which means, if your hypertension is caused by an by tachycardia or by increase in your heart rate, the solution there is to give a drug that will decrease the heart rate. Okay. So what are the drugs that decreases the heart rate? We have discussed that in your neurologic drug, your beta blockers, your mga propanolol, etc., mga ulol, ulol. These beta blockers will decrease. Remember the alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2? See, application of Nicarona. These beta blockers will actually block the con rate of contraction. The, the, it will block the contractility of the heart. It affects the rate of contraction, not the force. There are two types there as a contraction. We go for the rate or the speed of contraction and the force of contraction, how strong the contraction is. When you say rate of contraction, that is chronotropic, C-H-R-O, chronotropic, that is the rate of contraction. When you say force of contraction, that is inotropic. The inotropic is force of contraction. There are drugs that are both inotropic and chronotropic. When you will be practicing as nurses, you will hear the doctor would order for inotropes, please, or inotropes. You would, you should know what to prepare when the doctor tells you prepare inotropics because these conditions are for emergency situation. Okay, kato mga kalamat yun on diha tagan niya inotropics na hindi niya. Okay, it increases the force of contact. So you should be able to know by now what I am talking about. Again, let's go back to the heart. The heart 
in when the heart increases its rate of contraction, there will be more blood that will be propelled through the system, creating an increase in blood volume and hypertension. Whereas when the rate of contraction decreases, there will be less blood going to the system, so there will be hypertension. Okay, next will be the blood vessel. So the blood vessel constricts. What does it mean? The diameter of the lumen is decreased with the diameter of the lumen. We can shake the lumen blood vessel. I don't know if you can see me. Can you still hear me? Nay, distract the noise of my dog. Kana kadungog mo? Yes, Doc. Okay, now, okay. So, we will now start again. Ang humanat sa itong heart, heart, no? Ang itong heart, if may increase in contraction sa heart, it will increase your, I mean, the rate of contraction. It will increase the amount of blood propelling, propelled through the system, plus increase the blood pressure. If the heart rate decreases its rate of contraction, there will be less blood going to the system. Therefore, there will be less blood pressure. So that's about the heart. So if you are hypotensive, you just have to rate the, increase the rate of contraction if that is the problem. If hypotension is due to a decrease in heart rate, you just have to increase the heart rate. By the way, what are the, the drugs that would increase the heart rate? These are your sympathetic drugs. Ibalo naman sa effects sympathetic, no? Sympathetic drugs are stimulants except, katong diin na nato, which areas and exception? Ito sa pupil, sa inuhanga, bronchus, o sa inuhanga, intestine. See? Balik-balik to ha. Do not forget that. I told you. So, karon you just give sympathetic drugs for an increase in contraction if the cause of the hypotension is decrease in heart rate. Okay. Now, how about hi hi hypertension a problema? If hypertension, if the cause of the hypertension is increase in heart rate, what you usually do is to decrease the heart rate. You should do uh, bradycardic drugs. Those drugs that block your uh, beta receptor. These are the beta blockers. The beta blockers decrease the rate of contraction thus such that if the hypertension is caused by an increase in your heart rate, by decreasing the heart rate, you are treating hypertension. That is the first parameter of the heart. Let's go to the second parameter, which is the blood vessel. When the blood vessel constricts, the blood pressure increases. When the blood pressure, uh, when, when the blood vessel dilates, that, uh, when the blood vessel dilates, the blood pressure decreases. So that is so directly or inversely proportional. Now. Dilation and blood pressure. It will dilate, would, I mean, we're talking about diameter here. If the diameter of the blood vessel decreases, what happens to the blood pressure? Inversely proportional. Inversely damage. proportional, correct. When the blood pressure decreases, uh, when, when the diameter of the blood vessel decreases, the blood pressure increases. When the diameter of blood vessel in, uh, increases or dilates and no blood vessel, your blood pressure decreases. So it is inversely proportional, which means if the problem is hypotension due to a dilation of blood vessel, it's simple. We just give sympathetic drugs to constrict your blood vessel. So the blood vessel constricts, you are treating now your hypotension. However, if the problem is the uh, uh, hypertension, and if the cause of hypertension is due to constriction of blood vessels, you just give vasodilating drugs. These are your mga beta blockers, mga AC inhibitors, mga etc. These are calcium-channel blockers or pilain. These are the a vasodilating drug. So, ana na ha. So, that's the second parameter. The third parameter will be your blood nausea. If there will be an increase in the volume of the blood, you will have hypertension. 
So, kung mag-overload ka, kung mag- mag-hatag o uh, fluid sa imong pasyente, o ano mo check do overload yung pasyente, kaya pas-pas kayo ang rate of delivery ni mo, the hypertension yung pasyente, and that is your fault, by the way. Ha? So, if that is the problem, the patient will have hypertension kung sa kaya yung volume sa blood, o blood fluid, body fluid, I mean, yes, uh, vascular fluid. Now, if the opposite happens kung gamay o volume ay mga blood inside your blood vessel gamay o volume probably due to mga diarrhea profuse vomiting profuse diarrhea hemorrhage di ha ano what ang you can do if the circulating volume will be decreased the opposite happens you will have hypotension so how do you treat if you have hypotension this go to hypotension first due to a decreased amount of your blood volume You just have to give IV fluids para musaka yung blood volume. If the problem is is uh, blood loss, you just have to give blood. You transfuse with blood. That is it. Okay? You can also give plasma expanders that will increase the blood volume. If you don't know yet, what is the actual cost? You can give plasma expanders. Of course, we will be discussing when we go to fluids in your appendices. Now, let's go to the opposite. What happens if you have hypertension due to an increase in the volume of blood? If hypertension is due to increase in volume of blood, you just have to remove the blood by diuresis or ipaihi ni mo pasyente. Dili kay injeksyonan ni mo, di nga remove ni mo dugo, ha? Dili nga na na na. May increase again mo blood volume, i-diuresis ni mo, i-mo ipaihi alam pasyente so that ma-relieve siya sa i-mo increase or sa i-mo volume overload. Such is also the treatment if you overload your patient by uh, inadvertently uh, infusing more fluid to the patient. Usually, this is the nurse's fault na mag-overload in patient of fluid, IV fluid. Usually, this is the nurse's fault na wala nyo regulate ang inyong rate of infusion. That is the importance of regulating the body fluid. Mag-overload ka, Then, mag-pulman na edema ka, matay ngayon ng pasyente, yun mo lang sa'yo. So, again, very important po yung mag-ihap mo pila ka drop per minute na siya. Okay? So, those are the three parameters of the control of blood pressure. The others would follow. So, we may be discussing antihypertensive agents. We will be discussing these three primarily. Did you understand? Yes, Doc. Okay. Yes, doc. With regards to your um, diuretic, normal diuretic hormone, sa to ang heart, your atrium, by the way, we have ANP and BNP. ANP is atrial natriuretic peptide. As the name implies, the a- atrium uh, produces the ANP and its function is natriuresis. What is natriuresis? Imong iihi ang sodium. Nat is sodium. Natrium is sodium. Okay? Munang ka ng imuhang sodium, ang imuhang chemical symbol is Na. Kaya na, na siya natriuretic means iihi ka ang sodium. What did I tell you? Wherever sodium goes, water follows. So, pag ihi mo sa sodium, water follows. So, si pag ihi with that. That is with regard to your diuresis. Okay? Now, natriuresis uh, specifically with your ANP. Now, what is BNP? BNP is also released by your A Trium, not by the brain, huh? take note of that. Both ANP and BNP, even if BNP is called your brain natriuretic peptide, it is still produced by the atrium in response to volume overload in your heart. If your heart is developing cardiomegaly due to increase in fluid volume, your ANP and BNP will be released by your heart. Normal na siya metabo. Which means, kung umotest ka o ANP o BNP sa inyong dugo. If this ANP and BNP are increased, it means you have a volume overload sa inyong heart. These two are cardiac markers to determine overload of fluid sa inyong heart. Okay? Do not forget that. Because your heart senses an overload of fluid, ganahan siyang i-check niya kung galing na lumos niya sa tubig niyong heart. So, mo-release siya o substance, your ANP and BNP. Para mo-decrease, i-hang ang volume kaya nalumos na siya. Okay? Mo-release siya ang ANP and BNP. So, when you test the ANP and BNP and this is elevated, that means your 
uh, you have a cardiac volume overload. Okay? So what else? With regards to your hands, renin and tension aldosterone system, by the way, do not ever forget that. That is very, 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 very important. Even when we discuss your renal system, it is still important. Again, going back, your uh, your uh, renin and tension aldosterone system, ang yang stimulus for the initial release of your renin is decrease in blood volume, causing dilation of the renal vascular blood or your renal blood vessels. When your renal blood vessels are dilated or stretched, more stretch in your blood vessels in your kidney, it causes the release of the hormone renin. The renin will then, that is, by the way, releasing your hair, renin and your erythropoietin is one of the uh, endocrine functions of your kidney. Your kidney has endocrine functions. The release of your renin and your erythropoietin. So, belo naman mo, oh, wala pa tayo kagad sa erythropoietin, no? Now, discuss na to ang renin pa man, ganina. So, again, renin is released by the kidney in response to hypotension or directly in response to stretching of the renal blood vessels. Why? With hypotension, mo dilate mo yung blood vessel, my God. If the blood vessel dilates, your blood vessel will, your, the wall of your blood vessel will stretch, of course. So the stretching of the wall of blood vessels will cause the release of renin. The renin will now be released by the kidneys. It will act on the liver. The liver will then produce angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen from the liver is inactive. Once angiotensinogen goes out of the liver, it will be automatically converted into angiotensin 1. Again, the renin stimulates the liver to produce angiotensinogen. Nagani gen ang ending gani inactive na. Na gen ang ending inactive na. So, angiotensinogen sa liver will be released in response to renin from the kidney. So, once angiotensinogen is released by the liver, once it goes out of the liver, it will be automatically converted to angiotensin 1. Once angiotensin 1 goes to the lungs, it will be acted upon by the angiotensin-converting enzyme in the lungs. The angiotensin-converting enzyme in the lungs will convert your angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Now, this is the problem. Because angiotensin 2 is one of the more powerful vasoconstrictors in our body. So once angiotensin 2 is formed, it will cause vasoconstriction. Now, why is the renin angiotensin aldosterone happens? Why does it happen? Because your initial problem was hypotension, diba? Dilate in your blood vessel, that was initial problem. That uh, causes the release of your renin. Your body tries to correct it. That is where your body is. Why our body is perfectly made by the Lord. So initial problem was hypotension. Mubu imong blood pressure. So on say gibuhat in the end, pag release renin. Ang end effect niya is angiotensin 2 production. Kung sa effect sa angiotensin 2, vasoconstriction, causing an increase in your blood pressure. So, kung sa nanita mo, your hypotension initially is corrected na inisaka na inyong blood pressure by the end product na angiotensin 2. Okay? So, that is how our body is beautifully made to correct its own defect. Okay? Muna. That is under normal conditions. However, under abnormal conditions, kung constricted ang inyong blood, ang inyong blood vessel for whatever reason, hypertensive ka. So, under abnormal condition ha, pathology ta. So, with that, you can use this one, this step. You can you, you can block your angiotensin converting enzyme. By the way, your renin angiotensin aldosterone system each step of this can be blocked. Example, your renin. Renin is released by the kidney, diba? You can actually block the renin. We have a renin blocker, your aliskirin, which I think we'll discuss later. It is a renin blocker. Now, sorry, but we cannot block the conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. We can 